Welcome to Expert Talk Smart Flows. Today we are looking at result sets. Use a result set to filter a loop to make the items in a loop conditional. From these items, I only want to show the panels. To do this, I will create a result set called panels. I will use the fields from that result set in my table and loop over the results set result set instead of looping over my line items. This is best practice. Do not try to work conditions into your loop. Let's copy our table. And empty it. Then to create the result set, select the top element in your data set. Step two, add a result set. Step three, give it a name. Step four, select a base field. The base field is the line item you want to filter. So we want to filter the line items with the name panel. So my line item is the quote detail itself. Step five, add a condition. This will bring up the condition builder. The field to use will be the product name. That's a text field and it should contain the word panel. OK and OK. This now has added a new section to our data set. If you scroll down, we now have a section called result sets and in there, my panels result set. We can use the fields from the result set in our table. So I can map the product name. And from the line item itself, the quantity, the unit price, and the base amount. Don't forget to format your fields. And now, as a final step, we're going to add a loop over our line item. But instead of using the line item, we'll add the loop over the result set. This will apply the condition to our loop. And let's preview it. That's looking good, only panels. We might have to add a formula to calculate the subtotal. In our formula, we'll use the field from the result set again. And let's format that again as a currency. preview. And as you can see, the formula calculates the proper subtotal. Now let's add another condition to our result set. We can select the result set and click the pencil to edit it.
we can add a new condition. For instance, the price per unit should be greater than 500. This is a number field. Click OK and OK and preview. This should give us just one row, and that's correct, the only panel with a price over 500. If you use multiple conditions in your result set, by default, they must be all true. We are using the AND statement, but you can also use the OR statement. Let's edit our result set. We'll delete the price per unit condition and add a new condition where the name could contain, for instance, pump. If I would run a preview on this, I would yield no results because there's no product with panel and pump in the name. What I can do is select them and group them with OR. This will give me all the results, all the products with panel or pump in the name. Let's have a look. And that's correct. You can also use AND and OR in combination. Let's go to our result set and add our price condition again. I will group this new condition with my panels. Then I will group the end condition of the panels with a price greater than 500 with my pump products. I'll group them with OR. If you want to remove a grouping, click the name of the group itself and click ungroup. For now, I'll click OK and run my preview. I should now have two products, one panel with a great price greater than 500 and one pump. And that's correct. So this is it for result sets.